Welcome to Theology Savage. We are continuing our series in Mark's Gospel, considering those first preached words of Jesus, who said the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And last time we were together, we considered the kingdom of God and what that means. And we understood it largely as being synonymous with God's new uh, creation work that he's bringing about in his incarnate son. And of course, for that to make any sense, we have to go back to God's first creation work. And what we see in God's first work of creation is he creates everything, the heavens and the earth, all the animals. And, and so often after those great works of creation, uh, God says good, that it was good. And then, of course, that final work of God's creation, the pinnacle of his creation, is nothing other than, than humanity. Uh, you and me in the image of God, Adam in the image of God, Eve in the image of God. And, and after God uh, creates Adam, he says, very good, very good. So there's no inherent evil within uh, our first parents. And they're placed in a garden and given some commands to be fruitful, to, be, to multiply, to fill the earth, to subdue it. In a sense, as God is righteous, they are to rule righteously. And they're also given a few other commands, uh, one of which is to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day they eat of it, they should surely die. You see that there in Genesis 2. And of course, we know what happens is that they're tempted by Satan and they succumb to the temptation. Eve eats, Adam eats. And the next thing you know, they're, they're, they're ashamed and they're hiding from God. And, and the significance of Jesus' first words in uh, the Gospel of Mark to repent and believe the Gospel, um, the Gospel goes all the way back to really this Adam and Eve sin event. And, and God comes to them and they're hiding and they're ashamed. And he mentions, of course, you know, the difficulty of work and sweat of the brow and difficulty in childbearing and women wanting to lord it over man and man wanting to lord it over the woman and marriage. But in the midst of all that, he mentions really in the midst of sin and death, God mentions how he's going to send an offspring of the woman to crush the head of the serpent and to have his heel bruised. And you see that in Genesis 3.15. And of course, this offspring of the woman comes as the Lord Jesus Christ. The eternal Son of God sends His Son to take upon flesh and, and blood to become incarnate. Uh, Matthew says that He is Emmanuel, God with us. That He shall be called Jesus because He, was sa he will save His people from their sins. And so it makes sense that Jesus' first words, some of his very first words recorded in Mark's gospel would be, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. The time fulfilled from, promised from the very beginning of the scriptures after the fall into sin, um, that a savior would come. And, and here he comes preaching and we have good evidence that Adam and Eve believed that gospel ages before Jesus ever came. Because in the midst of sin and death in response to God's promise and, and really, you know, God's judgment through a whole host of things, Adam renames his wife from, from um, initially he, when God creates her, he's very excited. He says, uh, she shall be called uh, Isha for she came from Ish woman because she came from man and of course they sin and, and they 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 eat and they're ashamed and hiding from God and God gives them a promise and we see later in chapter 3 just a few verses later that Adam renames his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all living in the midst of their disobedience and sin and death God came in a promise to promise a savior and then what he does as well is God also clothes them with these animal skins. In other words, there's, there's a degree of blood shed. There's life given. Life is in the blood we see throughout the Old Testament. God kills animals and clothes Adam and Eve. And so when Jesus comes and says, repent and believe the gospel, you can trace it back to the very beginning, not just of Mark's gospel, but the very beginning of 
of the Bible after the fall into sin. And that's why the gospel is good news. Um, because it's something that God has promised to do in spite of our sin and our disobedience and our rebellion and our deceit and our hatred of God. That God, the King of all the earth, would send His beloved Son as one of us, not just to die and to be buried and to rise, but really to live among us for a good while and, and to love us and to show us how we are truly to live. And we fail to live that way every day, and yet God does not cast us off, but receives us, all who believe only for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the great promises in the Scripture, you think of repent and believe the Gospel, Jesus says. It's in Romans 10. It says, whoever believes in Him, in Jesus, will never be put to shame. Uh, I don't know about you, but there's a lot. Well, I do know about you, but I know about me as well. And there's a lot to be ashamed about uh, each of us and our sin and the ways that we dishonor God. But, but God says, whoever believes in Jesus will never be put to shame. And that's good news only because... Um, the one who would have his heel bruised is Jesus, who was put to shame, who was cast off, who on the cross was cut off uh, from the land of the living, was struck down by God so that we could be gathered in and received as children of God through repentance and certainly through believing and trusting uh, the gospel, looking to Christ alone for salvation. So that's good news. Uh, next time we're together, we'll consider kind of how that good news unfolds uh, through Abraham and through the rest of a few of the Old Testament scriptures. So be blessed.